Tennessee wins the all orange orange bowl squeezing the life out of Clemson 28 14 Clemson freshman Cade Klubnik making his first start. He was not sharp completed 30 of his 54 passes with two interceptions did make it a seven point game in the fourth quarter rushing for a touchdown. But Tennessee quarterback Joe Milton answered with a 47 yard touchdown pass Milton stepping up in the place of the injured Hendon Hooker tossed three touchdowns no interceptions. He finishes with 10 passing touchdowns, no INTs in nine appearances this season. Tennessee finishes the season with an 11 and two record. It's most wins since 2001. It's a mid-set analysis. Welcome to CBS Sports HQ college football analyst Barrett Salee. Joe Milton tosses three touchdowns, no picks to lead Tennessee to victory over Clemson in the all orange orange bowl. Barrett, what's your reaction to how he played in this game? Oh, he was just tremendous. The knock on Joe Milton when he lost his job at Michigan and when he lost his job last year at Tennessee is that he overthrows everybody. His arm strength is too good. He doesn't know how to throw a changeup. Everything is a Ricky Vaughn 100 mile an hour heater. He showed touch today. He showed touch on those short passes. The first touchdown pass to Brew McCoy, that's an NFL throw. And I think that was the story throughout the course of the game for Joe Milton. So extremely happy for him uh, in a situation like this. It, it shows what kind of upside he has. It shows what kind of person he is to stick around while Hendon Hooker has become a star in on Rocky Top. So uh, very impressive performance for Joe Milton. He deserves it. And uh, man, that you got to feel good for that Tennessee fan base overall. But, uh, you know, great stage for Joe. And uh, hopefully it's a good sign for things to come. Perhaps a Heisman contender heading into 2023 after this one. Uh, meantime, Clemson freshman Cade Klubnik making his first start. He was not sharp. Completed 30 of his 54 passes, two interceptions. A much different Klubnik, Barrett, compared to the one we saw leading Clemson to the ACC championship. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think you can see the, the talent that he's got and why people are very excited about him. I think for Kay, look, he's he's a true freshman. He made his first start on a massive stage against a relentless Tennessee defense. So, yeah, he's got to make better decisions. I don't think there's anything, uh, uh, no doubt about that. In the first half, I thought actually he made some decent decisions, but too late. Had he made those decisions earlier on, on screen passes, on crossing routes, even on some deep routes, then Clemson would have been fine. But he got way too much. He got way too much uh, happy feet. He got way too uh, uncomfortable in the pocket. Tennessee's pressure really, I think, affected him in the second half because we saw he was dropping back like you and I on Madden when we're playing Madden. Like we don't know what we're doing. We're just going to run backwards 15 yards. That was a direct result of the pressure that he got in the first half and really the third quarter. He was seeing ghosts out there. So it wasn't a great performance for Cade Klubnik. Uh, I think when, when we talk about what he is moving forward, I don't think we should judge him based on this game. He, got, he saw ghosts. He had bad protection. He has a full offseason. He has a full offseason as the number one quarterback in an offense that is typically very, very good. So... It was not a great performance, but I do think there's a lot to build off of and a lot of positives to take away from it when you sort of look beneath sort of the things that jump off the stat page in, a, in the wrong way. Yeah, Klubnik will be relied on in 2023 to get this Clemson program back on track as a national threat. In terms of what's next for Clemson, of course, they're going to hop on a plane, head back to Clemson, South Carolina. But what's next for Dabo Sweeney's program? Because this is three losses in a season where perhaps they were supposed to get back on track. DJ Uy Ungalale transfers out. Cade Klublik now takes the lead. But now you got some questions here for Dabo. Yeah, there's no doubt. Two of the last three games ended in losses. And before that, they were theoretically in the college football playoff on, although watching Clemson all year. And I think this is the most important point. They didn't look like a college football playoff team. They didn't look like a team that could compete with any of the four teams that are playing on, on Saturday. And so I think the biggest thing for him is how do you get that defensive front back when Clemson was at its best? It wasn't necessarily because of its offense. It was because that front seven just consistently churned superstar after superstar after superstar. That was under Brent Venables. And granted, they played pretty well defensively throughout the entire season, but that's not elite. They were elite when Brent Venables was there. So I think if you pair 
Cade Klubnik build off what he was able to do in this game. You pair that with a defense that is deep and versatile, then they'll be fine. The problem is, I don't know if those guys exist on that Clemson roster right now. What Dabo Sweeney needs to do, and it's something that really he has been, uh, re he hasn't really affected this that much. He hasn't really gone in to the transfer portal. He's actually been opposed to the transfer portal. So I think he's got to go in. He's got to build some depth. And I think when you're selling defensive linemen on the Clemson brand, on the Clemson product, on the NIL opportunities, even though Dabo doesn't like those, uh, you, you still have them at Clemson. That's attractive for players that know that they can get groomed into NFL defensive linemen. So I know we're going to sit here and talk about the offense, and it wasn't great down the stretch, and, and DJ probably had a lot to do with that. But you got Cade Klubnik. You have something to build off of. You have Will Shipley. You have to find that depth, that versatility in the front seven. And if they do that, I think they can look like a legitimate college football playoff team. It might not necessarily be like the ones we saw with Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence, but those are generational quarterbacks. And Cade Klubnik, I think if you compare him to those guys, that's not only a disservice to him, that would be a disservice to basically every college football quarterback right now. Yeah, but if you don't keep up with the times, as you know, you're going to get left behind. If Dabo Sweeney yeah. says, I'm not going to touch the transfer portal or I'm not going to use that uh, as, as a tool, as a resource, then this is going to be a program that just continues to fall flat because you got to be able to, to, to be flexible in this situation because we've seen how programs have turned around with the transfer yeah. portal. And Dabo perhaps could have had a better team this year with the transfer portal. We'll never know, but you got to be willing to make adjustments. you got to be willing to change. It doesn't seem like yeah. he wants to. Well, and he does it. Well, here's the thing. I think he gets misunderstood a little bit. I think Dabo right now, he is treating this like Nick Saban treated hurry-up offenses back in the day. When he hired Lane Kiffin, remember, he was still anti-hurry-up offense publicly. He said that numerous times. In fact, he joined Brett Bielema in lobbying for a 10-second rule where you couldn't snap the ball in, uh, within 10 seconds of the play clock starting. But at the same time, Nick Saban was building a hurry-up offense. So I think that's what Dabo needs to do, and I think that's what he will do. Look, he doesn't like NIL. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He doesn't like that. the transfer portal being as big of a deal as it is right now. But he's going to have to use them. And I think he's smart enough to understand that, where he can sit here and say, all right, I don't like college football to be this way. And that's fine. But he's got to still use those tools. And I think, I think he will. He's not going to sit here and dig his heels in to a point where it hurts himself, his program, and really the school in general because it is so dependent on that football program. Well, you know who is a transfer? Joe Milton, as you mentioned, from Michigan. And uh, he's going to have some competition in 2023. Taven yep. Jackson in the quarterback room along with five-star quarterback Nico Iamaleava, who headlines Josh Heupel's 2023 class. Uh, this is really Milton's job to win, especially after what he did this season, capping it off as Orange Bowl MVP. Yeah, it is. There's no doubt that he's going to go into the offseason as the number one quarterback. But I think you mentioned Nico, and that's an interesting part of this because I think when you look at, at Joe Milton, yeah, you can see what he's got. He's got the arm talent. He's got the arm strength. But the consistency hasn't necessarily been there throughout his career at Michigan and at Tennessee. What does Nico bring to the table? And at the same time, you're talking about a guy that's getting a lot of money in terms of NIL. Those collectives, that might be something they start pushing. I'm not saying they will, but at some point in college football, that is going to play a part in who starts. But I think for Joe Milton, first things first, go into spring practice and prove you can be consistent. He hasn't done that. Prove that you can build off some of these short and intermediate passing routes that he was so successful with in the Orange Bowl. If that happens then yeah, he's going to win that job. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if Nico got some snaps early on in the 2023 campaign just to see if he's ready uh, to not only compete with Joe Milton, but lead this Tennessee team not only back to a New Year's Six Bowl, but potentially to a college football playoff first. What's next for Barrett Salee? I'll tell you what's next for Barrett Salee. He's going to go to bed, and then he's got college football playoff duty assigned to one of the biggest games I, I don't on know Saturday. if I'm actually going to sleep, though. I'm going to try. All right. But, you know, the, I, the playoff, the game in, in Atlanta is like, what, 10 hours from now, nine hours from now? Got to be it's up early with Josh Pate. There you, you know? go.
Get, get rested and ready. Get rested and ready, my friend. We'll see you on Saturday. And you know who we're going to see on Saturday a lot next season? This young man, Joe Milton, a taste of what's to come. Uh, he was excellent in this game. Uh, he, he replaced Headed Hooker, who got injured, suffered the torn ACL in the South Carolina game, then uh, led Tennessee to a 55 uh, big win, 56 nothing over Vanderbilt. And uh, now he leads him to a win in the Orange Bowl. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.